Welcome back to your hotel room. We hope you've been enjoying your quarantine. This is all the participants get by way of introduction before they enter the room, which seems to be a normal hotel room. They see a bed and bedside table, a food service tray, a filing cabinet, and a desk. There's also a prominent painting on the wall and a briefcase on a luggage carrier. On the desk, there's a phone with which to contact the front desk, as well as a computer open to the hotel internet page. This does require a login. The phone message provides important context for the room by introducing the mysterious Baker and Franklin characters and giving participants the goal of disabling the security system in order to escape. The next puzzle involves COVID test strips. On the filing cabinet, which is locked, there's a tray with two COVID test strips and two vials, labeled patient serum and distilled water, respectively. An instruction sheet next to the tray indicates that this is a daily test for participants and that they tested positive yesterday. The instructions indicate that after dipping the test strip in the serum, a line will appear by the C. If the test is positive, a line will also appear by the T. Before dipping the strip in the serum, the strip is blank. Afterwards, lines appear for both the C and the T, indicating a positive result. This occurs for both the patient serum and the distilled water. Sounds suspicious, right? There's more. The activated strips also display a series of digits, which can be put together into the code 35823 to unlock the filing cabinet. The drawer of the filing cabinet contains a black light, flashlight, and a letter from the American Novelty Company to Dr. Franklin, thanking them for the purchase of novelty COVID test strips, which always display a positive result. The letter references Franklin's societal isolation study, further cluing participants in on the nature of their quarantine. Most importantly, two words in the letter are capitalized, home and theirs. File this away for later. The next puzzle is the food service tray. The design of the escape room is non-linear, so participants can do some puzzles in different orders, but to solve this one, they do need to have completed the COVID test puzzle first. On the ground by the door is a food service tray. When participants take everything off the tray and flip it upside down, they find an odd design that looks like a map. Using the flashlight, they discover secret directions leading from the lab to the exit. The arrows point in the following directions, down, right, down, right, up, right. Next to the food service tray, the bedside table has a locked drawer, a directional lock. That's perfect for this code. After entering the correct code, participants find room service instructions with a note from Baker on top. Was Franklin adding anything to their food? And how can they access the hotel intranet? But what's really critical here is that PLACE is in all caps. Now, let's look at that skull hanging on the wall. Strange decoration for a hotel. 
When participants look behind it, they find a cryptic message, find where I belong and lift up, and a magnet. Where would a skull belong in the room? Let's look over at the large painting, which depicts a bull fight. When the magnet is placed on the bull's horns and moved upwards, the painting unlatches and slides to the right, revealing a security camera and a note about the security system. Franklin purchased three cameras, which are all online. However, what participants are looking for here are the capitalized words like and no. When participants check out the bed, they shouldn't leave anything unturned. When the pillow is flipped over, there's a code written on the back. The 21 tick marks represent the number of days that the group has been in quarantine. But the way the tick marks are grouped is interesting and can be interpreted as a three-digit code, 669. When this code is entered into the briefcase on the luggage carrier, it opens smoothly. Inside the briefcase is another note from Baker. On top of a letter from the University Institutional Review Board chastising Franklin for his unethical research protocol. Baker's note is interesting. Two notations from the Bible are arranged to indicate a username and password. A flip through the Bible reveals how Baker's note is coded. Genesis 7, 13, 12 refers to part 7, phrase 13, both of which are numbered in the book. The 12 refers to the 12th word in that section. In this case, it's Japheth. The second part can be easily decoded as well. Psalm 31, 1, 8 refers to Psalm 31, first phrase, eighth word. In this case, it is refuge. Now participants have the username and password for the hotel intranet, which is how they can order room service, but it's also how Baker intended for them to access the security system. At the computer, when they enter the correct username and password, the screen changes to show that they are actually now logged in as a security administrator. Participants still need the override code in order to shut down the security system. What could it be? Think back to all those capitalized words and put them together into a familiar phrase. There's no place like home. It's time for quarantine to end and for these unwilling participants to head home. When the correct code is entered and it's case sensitive, the three security cameras shut down, leaving participants free to go. The phone message is adapted from an audio guest book project. A teensy computer runs a program that plays a welcome message and then allows someone to record their own message, which is saved on an SD card. In this case, the message was swapped out and the recording functionality was not used, although it is still active. We'll have a few confused messages on the SD card once the room is disassembled. The painting is a fun mechanical challenge. Mounted on two rails, it slides easily except for a wooden dowel blocking its path. The dowel has a magnet mounted to it. Another magnet can be used to lift the dowel up and down, allowing the painting to move back and forth. Although the dowel was a little finicky, this puzzle was a favorite with participants. Lastly, the electronic interface gave great flexibility to the types of codes that participants were looking for in the room. Built on the hobbyist version of Ignition, called Perspective, the interface starts participants on the hotel intranet page. Once they successfully enter the username and password, they see the security system page. Once the correct override code is entered, the security cameras shut down in a random order until they are all offline. Then the host can press the logout button to reset the game. Overall, this was a pretty simple escape room, but with enough puzzles to entertain a large group and some fun mechanical and electronic elements. <laughs>